Myanmar's military government says that the current situation in the country is not one that should concern the international community. Its spokesman describes what's happening as being on a road to authentic democracy. He also says that Aung San Suu Kyi is accused of corruption. $600,000 in cash and 11 kilograms in gold. That's the legal payment the military accuses Aung San Suu Kyi of accepting while in government. But it did not say when it happened, only that an investigation is ongoing. Corruption accusations were also leveled against President Win Min and other cabinet ministers. Speaking at a media conference, the military spokesperson Zomin Tun reiterated that elections would take place eventually, but indicated that Myanmar would see changes to its electoral system. The military has sought to replace the current first-past-the-post system with that of proportional representation. Finally, the military defended its use of force against civilians as reports of seven more deaths emerged. He called security forces disciplined, adding that they only use force when necessary. <laughs> Protests continue across the country in smaller groups. Tear gas have been used on anti-coup protesters at two separate marches in Dawei. The estimated civilian death toll has topped 60. Young Waikit joins us live now for more. Waikit, the military have now accused Aung San Suu Kyi and President Win Mint, both ousted since February 1st, both detained, of taking bribes now. Are their claims credible? Well, Don, that really depends on whom you ask. If there is the army side and then there is the rest of Myanmar and perhaps the rest of the world. But what this does tell you is it gives you a prelude of Ms Aung San Suu Kyi's fate in the near future. Already, while she's being under house arrest, she faces four charges. This is no doubt another charge on the financial uh, track being worked against her. Uh, don't forget that uh, very recently, the army revealed that her economic advisor, Sean Turner, who's Australian and also being detained, uh, the army accused uh, Sean Turner of possessing high-level secret economic document. Uh, last month, the army also raided Ms. Aung San Suu Kyi's NLD headquarters in Yangon. They confiscated items, uh, including uh, computers as well as items in the safe box. And of course, uh, Ms. Suu Kyi's uh, foundation, which she, she founded, uh, uh, was, is, is now also being looked into for any financial wrongdoing. So this is really uh, a prelude as to what she may face in the near future. And don't forget, this is all only in the public domain. There's also, perhaps we need to consider also backdoor or behind the scenes of, of what else the army is working up against Ms. Suu Kyi. Oh, meantime, Waikit, unrest in the country is continuing. The civilian death toll, it just keeps rising. What's it going to take for the violence to end? Don, this is a very, very difficult question to, to answer. I mean, it takes two hands to clap. And for the clapping to not take place, one of the hands must be out of the equation or there must be an external factor to stop the clapping from happening. As of now, the Myanmar army as well as the protesters, neither of these parties seem to be backing down. As for external factors that could hinder further clashes, one could imagine perhaps uh, the... Uh, peaceful resolution or dialogue to take place, but that is not making a lot of headway. The other predictable external factor that could stop the clash from happening could be the release of Aung San Suu Kyi, but again, that's even further away from the truth. Uh, but I also want to point out that there appears to be trigger points to lethal violence. It appears that there is a link between very high-level meetings on Myanmar and lethal violence. The, the latest uh, on Thursday is happening on the back of the UN Security Council meeting on Myanmar. Uh, previous occasions include how the ASEAN uh, ministers had talked informally about Myanmar, as well as trilateral talks among Indonesia, Thailand and Myanmar. So the facts are there. A high-level meeting about Myanmar, lethal violence. It's really up to individuals to join the dots. But the fact is that lethal violence continues in Myanmar. The fact is that more and more people are telling me that they no, long, they, they no longer feel safe in Myanmar. Waikit, thank you very much for that. Thanks for staying on top of this story for us. Young Waikit there.